When a mysterious room that grants their wishes turns out to be a disaster, a couple tries to flee their new home. Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is a psychological horror from 2019 titled, The Room. A young couple, Matt and Kate are settling into their newly purchased home. They will have to fix up the house after they finish unpacking because it is old and in poor condition. Matt is a painter, and he and Kate appear to be a happy married couple as they prepare to begin their new life in the house. Kate is cleaning up the kitchen when she discovers a dead bird on the floor. She tries to bury the bird in the yard outside, but is interrupted by the loud sound of furniture being thrown from the second floor by Matt. When Kate turns around to finish the burial, she discovers that the bird has vanished. Meanwhile, Matt is removing old broken furniture from the house when he discovers a mysterious vintage key. The couple continues to clean the house when Matt discovers something behind the torn up wallpaper. It's an old metal door with a large keyhole in the center. He goes outside to retrieve the two-pieced key he found and discarded earlier before returning it to the metal door. He successfully tries to open the door with it and calls his wife to come check it out with him. When Kate attempts to enter the room, the lights in the house begin to flicker, causing her to take a step back. Matt decides to call an electrician to come take a look. Kate and Matt are celebrating their move with a bottle of wine in front of the fireplace that night. They hear a noise from somewhere inside the house, but Kate brushes it off by calling Matt a wimp. The following day, Kate is encouraging Matt to begin his painting when she receives a call requesting her translation services. While she is on the phone, Matt decides to explore the mysterious room on his own, causing the lights to flicker once more. He is startled by Kate who tells him that the electrician has arrived. When the two men inspect the electrical wiring in the basement, the electrician says it's very old and complicated, which could explain why the lights are flickering. Before leaving, the electrician tells Matt that he is surprised that someone wanted to buy the house so long after the incident. Matt inquires as to what happened, and it is revealed that the previous owners of the house were murdered inside. Matt is intrigued so he conducts an online search for information about the murder. The house was dubbed, House of Blood, in a newspaper article after the Schaefer couple was discovered dead inside. They appear to have apprehended and sentenced the murderer, but he is only known as John Doe because his identity couldn't be determined. Later, he sketches John Doe before drunkenly entering the mysterious room. When the lights go out, he finishes his bottle, mumbling that he needs another. When it comes back on, he is surprised to see a full bottle of alcohol on the floor. Kate awakens the next morning, perplexed by flickering lights. She searches for Matt and discovers him inside the mysterious room filled with expensive famous paintings. She inquires as to where he obtained them, but Matt only responds by telling her to ask for something she desires. Kate playfully asks for a thousand dollars, and after searching around the room for it, Matt gives the money to Kate. She suspects it's a hoax or Matt's money, so he tells her to make a wish for a million dollars, which appears right in front of them. Kate is frightened, but Matt assures her that they should enjoy the gifts that the room bestows upon them. As a result, the couple begins to wish for more things. Expensive alcohol, nice clothes, caviar, diamonds, and a lot more money to play with. The room instantly grants whatever they wish for. Kate wonders how the room works. Matt, on the other hand, advises not to think about it and to simply enjoy yourself. Kate sits alone in the kitchen after a few days of hard partying, staring at the mess they made. Kate appears bored and jaded as Matt approaches her on the swing outside. He asks her where the necklace she wished for is, but she doesn't mind because she can always ask for more necklaces. Later, Matt surprises Kate by bringing her into a nursery room, telling her that they should try for a baby again. Kate on the other hand, does not want to go through it again because she has had two miscarriages from their previous attempts. Matt approaches her as she smokes outside, but decides to go for a ride to clear his head. When Matt is away, Kate returns to the nursery before going into the mysterious room. Matt returns home to find Kate playing with a baby boy who appeared out of nowhere. He is furious, asking why she would ask the room to give her a baby. She says she took a shortcut because she doesn't think they can successfully have a baby. He thinks she's crazy and tells her that they should return the baby back to the room and wish it away. However, as the baby cries, Matt is unable to do so and returns him to Kate. The baby is crying in hunger that night, so Matt requests a bottle of baby's milk from the room. When he returns, he is taken aback to see Kate breastfeeding the baby, which defies logic. After a few days, Matt is reminded of the murder case and comes across a quote from John Doe, who stated that the room made him do it. 
Matt decides to take some money from the room and visit John Doe in a mental hospital where he has been sentenced. Matt has to pretend to be a reporter in order to meet John, and the nurse is surprised that he wants to see him. Inside, an elderly John, approaches Matt and invites him to sit with him and tells Matt that he is not a reporter. Matt introduces himself as the new owner of the house, he inquires as to why John murdered the couple who lived in the house, and John responds that it was the only way. He then tells Matt to forget about the room and leave the house as soon as possible before it's too late. On the way home, Matt stops at a gas station but when he's about to pay for the gas, the money he had taken from the room disappears and turns into ashes. When he gets home, he grabs a wad of cash from the room and throws it outside the house. Immediately, the money turns into dust. He tries again with a Van Gogh painting, putting only half of it outside the house. Half of the painting starts to age rapidly before turning into dust, confirming his theory that whatever they wish for, they can't take outside or it will age and turn into dust. Later, Kate is singing to the baby when she hears loud noises coming from the room. She finds Matt hacking away at the wall of the room, saying that he needs to know how it works. After ripping away the drywall and flooring, Matt reveals that the room is surrounded by the vine-like structures that are also present around the house's electrical wiring in the basement. He goes out of the room and rips away the walls and floors again, only to find more vines. He also finds some strange markings behind the wallpaper. Meanwhile, Kate is about to take the baby outside for some fresh air. Matt tries to stop her by saying that it's dangerous to go outside but Kate ignores him. When they walk outside, the baby starts to age rapidly. Kate screams in horror as Matt rushes them inside. They see that the baby has now turned into a young boy. After bathing the boy, Kate confronts Matt about what he knows. He tells her that everything the room makes will age and turn to dust if it's brought outside of the house, including the child. However, Kate still treats the boy as her own, she names him Shane, and teaches him to read. She also insists on him not going outside, saying it's because he is sick. Frustrated and wanting to go outside, Shane gets angry and violently throws his pencils before shutting the door on Kate. Matt has bought a gun for safety and tests it out in the woods nearby, getting better at using it day by day. Meanwhile, Shane is constantly wondering what it's like to be outside. No matter how much Kate tries to entertain him inside, Shane is always looking out of the windows. One day, while Kate isn't watching, Shane tries to go outside but he's stopped by Kate just as he begins to put his hand out. Kate begins to lock all the doors and board up the windows in the house. Shane enters the room where Matt has been painting and runs off after being caught and told to leave by Matt. This sparks an argument between the couple, with Matt claiming that Shane is a figment and not a boy. Shane is bored and curious at night, so he wanders the house, discovering the strange power source before discovering the mysterious room. When the couple returns to the room in the morning, they discover that Shane has wished for it to look like the outside, so he can play. Matt then locks the door and puts the key inside a drawer, saying he's afraid Shane will wish for something dangerous, like a dragon, and that they should both be very cautious. While the couple is arguing, Shane answers the phone and it's a call from John. John tells Matt that there is a way for Shane to go outside without turning to dust, but he must first kill the person who wished for him to appear. John is aware of all this because he likes Shane, was wished for. When the family discovered that John could live freely outside if he killed the person who wished for him, the wife killed her husband before forcing John to kill her. Kate, who has been listening on the call, drives away from the house and is gone for hours, contemplating taking her own life so Shane can live freely but is unable to do it. While waiting for Kate to return home, Matt tells Shane the truth out of anger, that he's not a real person. However, he apologizes to Shane when the child seems sad, offering to read to him. Soon after, Kate returns home to find Shane and Matt asleep together. The couple awakens one morning to find the front door open. They rush to find Shane, who has grown into a teenager. He then threatens them with Matt's gun, but Kate manages to calm him down. Seeing an opportunity, Matt attacks Shane, but he inadvertently hits Kate and knocks her unconscious. When she awakens, Matt informs her that Shane was killed when the gun went off and he buried him outside. Kate is heartbroken and starts crying as Matt lifts her into the house. However, it appears that the real Matt was unconscious, and as he wakes up, he runs around the house looking for Kate, until discovering that Shane has her, and they're locked inside the room. Matt begins to break the walls in an effort to get in the room somehow. Shane, who is impersonating Matt, is having breakfast with Kate in the room, which appears to be in their house. 
Kate starts to suspect that it's Shane when Matt starts chewing on the ice like Shane used to do. Kate tries to flee, but Shane stops her and begins to sexually force himself on her, knocking her unconscious. When Kate wakes up she tries to leave the room but comes across two identical mats and is unsure which one is the real mat. One of them reaches for Kate, but she recognizes him and shoves him down the stairs. Kate and the real Matt try to flee, only to discover that they are going in circles inside the house and are unable to find a way out. Shane has created a labyrinth within the bogus house. Shane finds the couple while they are still trapped and stabs Matt in the stomach. Matt falls to the ground and as Shane tries to hug Kate, he realizes that those are not Matt and Kate when he sees them running outside. They run through the fake forest and out of the wish room as Shane pursues them. As they're about to walk out of the house, Shane appears coming down the stairs. When he charges Matt with his knife, Matt is able to pop the door open and grab Shane as the two fall aside. Realizing he's outside, Shane tries to run back before turning into dust but Kate locks the door and watches as Shane begins to deteriorate and eventually turns to dust. One month later, as Kate and Matt start a new life, Kate discovers she is pregnant, but she has no idea if it is Matt or Shane's baby. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.